Hello everyone. Today we are going to pick up our discussion of space exploration after the 1969 moon landing where Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins made it to the moon and then we, we move on throughout the rest of the Apollo missions and into some other, um, other things that we'll be discussing. All right, so after 1969, um, there were still some more Apollo missions and um, still some more trips to the moon that we accomplished. As you guys read in your assignment um, on Tuesday, Apollo 13 was of particular interest to everybody around the world um, because it is known as NASA's most successful failure. And that these three astronauts right here, Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes and Jack Swigert made it up into space and the mission was supposed to be for them to go to the moon and collect moon rock. But while they were up in space, their craft exploded, uh, which is a really bad place to have technical difficulties, right? And this is, again, this is in the 70s. And so it's known as the most successful failure because we were able to take these three men from this dire situation and catapult them around the other side of the moon and get them home in a craft that wasn't meant to house them and they came home safely. And so even though they did not carry out the mission, they did not get to go to the moon, um, it was considered just a really fine moment for NASA as far as the um, problem solving and engineering and technology that we used, at, especially at that time to make this um, not add to the casualty list. All right, then we, um, in Apollo 14 and 15, 16 and 17, um, we continued our exploration of the moon. Um, we went up and collected those moon rocks that Apollo 13 was supposed to get. Um, we developed moon rovers and drove them around on the moon. Um, and in um, 1972, Apollo 17 um, returns to Earth, and that marks the end of the Apollo missions, and it marks the end of our exploration of the moon for the time being. Okay, after that, um, we kind of engaged in um, a, a lot of focus on the other planets. Um, we sent the Pioneer probe to the outer planets right here, the Pioneer probe right here, to map out and give us some of our first glimpses of the outer planets. And then the Mariner 10 space probe went the other direction and went to the inner planets. And it gave us um, a new kind of view of our of our solar system. Um, after that, and re remember there's a lot of things in between here. Okay, I'm just highlighting some really big moments, some really big um, missions. Um, in in 19, um, in 1973, the United States launched Skylab, which is what this is right here. It almost looks like a space probe in, in that it has these solar panels and it's fairly small. Um, but there is this living space in here, this laboratory in here that allows for astronauts to go up into space and actually spend time, um, spend more time in space so we could study the effects that that has on humans. Um, that was up in space for a couple years until it came down back through our atmosphere um, and landed in Australia. Uh, 1975, the European Space Agency uh, organized themselves, kind of like our, our version or their version of our NASA. Okay, so the ESA, the European Space Agency, uh, organized, and now we were becoming, you know, all of these large organizations around the world. We're all kind of looking collectively towards exploring space together. And this leads up to um, this really big event, the um, docking of the Soyuz craft and, a, and the United States Apollo um, craft right here. And so what happened was these two um, 
these two crafts were launched and um, they rendezvoused in space. And once they clicked together, this is a Soviet craft right here, and here's the, the American craft. Once they linked together, the cosmonauts and the astronauts were able to go um, in between these two crafts. And it kind of marked, this was 1975, it kind of marked the, f um, the beginning of this cooperative effort um, of space exploration, of moving forward um, together as a nation, knowing that we're going to need the best and the brightest and the most amounts of money in order to really um, ever put a man on Mars and to explore the outer reaches of the solar system. So we started to work collaboratively together. So here's a couple Soviet astronauts and here's the Americans. And this is right, this is kind of a mini version of what we've got going on now with the International Space Station. Okay, and this is where I'm going to end for today. Um, 1976 was our first successful landing. The United States landed the Viking 1 on the surface of Mars and gave us back these fantastic pictures of the surface of Mars. Now this is a replica because um, all of the things that we have have sent to Mars, have stayed at Mars. Um, but this is an actual picture of the surface of Mars, and that was a really big deal to get these first glimpses of an extraterrestrial world. We stop here with a lecture today um, because tomorrow you will be getting an assignment, and you can start to think about that now if you'd like. You're just going to choose any Mars mission, any mission at all. It could be from the past, starting July 20th of 1976, all the way up into future missions of putting a man on Mars. Uh, there's a lot of different landers that happened in between there. There's a lot of rovers, from really small rovers to big like SUV size rovers that we've had up there. So there's a lot to choose from. And in the assignment that you'll get tomorrow, there will be a web page that has a link to um, a lot of different information. And it's a really quick little research project, but I wanted to pause here because I'm gonna have you guys study all of our Mars exploration. And then I'll come back on, um, on Friday and we'll talk just briefly about um, the space shuttle missions, okay? I hope you are all well and we'll talk soon.